The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching. With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Gospel today ends with a really interesting statement. And at once, his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Fame is a tricky thing. Growing up, I had two different desires, or perhaps a better term is tracks, to become famous. The first was to be the closing pitcher for the New York Mets. I can remember riding the public bus to high school every morning, listening to music in my Walkman, trying to figure out what song I would use to make my entrance with the game on the line as I sprinted in from the outfield. I think I eventually decided on the Superman theme song by John Williams. Unfortunately, I was not a good enough pitcher in high school to make even the Mets. (laughs) That was subtle, but y'all got it, I like that. The other fantasy I had about being famous was to be the lead guitarist in a heavy metal band like Slash for Guns N' Roses. Now this was pure dreaming. I never even learned how to play an instrument. But my air guitar got really good over those years. Fame can be a terrible idol to chase. For some, fame can even be a dreadful curse as we've seen with so many famous people who have medicated themselves to death with illegal drugs because they could not handle their fame. Fame comes from being known for accomplishing something extraordinary, whether in sports, cinema, politics, or fields like science, literature, or even religion. What fame gives a person is a platform to influence more people to hear what the famous person has to say. What began to make Jesus famous in Mark's account was, after his baptism by John, that he spoke with authority to a group of people in Capernaum. Capernaum is a city on the Sea of Galilee, about 121 miles north of Jerusalem and about 30 miles northeast of Jesus' hometown of Nazareth. I have been to the synagogue in Capernaum that is mentioned in this reading. As I sat there, imagining this very scene that we read today, I imagined myself as a member of the congregation. How would I have felt about what we read today? 
Or perhaps a better question is, who would I have told about what I had just seen? If there's anything I could say for sure about communities of faith, it's that secrets don't stay secret for very long. In churches, news spreads faster than a room empties when someone sneezes without a mask on. <laughs> can you all imagine? Can you all imagine if as I was up here preaching today, one of you stood up, possessed by a demon, and started talking back to me? Okay, good. Now, if that did happen, I'm sure it would have come out of the choir. We all know Satan easily corrupts musicians. Now, imagine that did happen. And my response was to calmly say, be silent and come out of him or her. And the person who was possessed had convulsions and was healed. If that happened today, I would be on ABC 7 News before the day was over. And with all the cameras we have in here now, I would venture to guess the whole thing would go viral. Before you know it, I would be a national sensation. Come see the man who casts out demons, only $100 per ticket. For sure. If something like that, if something that astonishing happened here at the Church of the Redeemer, all of us, all of us would go home and tell everyone we knew, and rightly so. The fact is, things like that do happen at Redeemer regularly. Sure, there might not be any supernatural exorcisms happening, but why do we find that so much more awe-inspiring than some of the things we accomplish every week here? Things happen at Redeemer weekly that should make the news. The sick are anointed and often healed. Someone who's fallen on hard times and cannot pay their bills comes to Redeemer. And through the generosity of many people, we help them. We celebrate the Eucharist every single day of the week. The church is open every day for anyone to come in and to be with Jesus. Like he was with the people in Capernaum. Miracles happen every day for Christians. Unfortunately, we too often have a hard time recognizing them. There was a small church on Clark Road that I drove by after Michael's baseball games coming home from Twin Lake Parks. The sign on the church said, Making Jesus Famous, in a very unfortunate font. Unfortunately for them, the church has since closed, and there's a new sign there that's far less catchy. And while I'm sure that that church was definitely not my style, their sign made a really good point. How are we supposed to grow the kingdom if we don't make our leader, our savior, famous? to make him known to the ends of the earth. Today, after this Mass, Father Wilson will deliver what is essentially a state of the parish address. I already know a lot of what is in that address, and I can tell you the things I've already, I've already mentioned as reasons for making Jesus, Jesus famous because of what is being accomplished here at Redeemer are just the tip of the iceberg. At the end of the Mass, the deacon of the Mass dismisses us, saying one of three or four optional forms found in the prayer book. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. 
Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you hear that, I hope in the back of your minds you also hear, let us go forth and make Jesus famous in Sarasota and beyond. Pride in your church can be a good kind of pride. I pray that each of us is proud enough of Redeemer's accomplishments that we can't stop ourselves from blurting them out to anyone who will hear us. Miracles happen here. Let's let everyone know about it. Amen.